Moving on from that, let's talk about the main thing I want to talk about today, which is Tyler Creator's Louis Vuitton Spring 2024 Capsule Collection, which has finally dropped on the retail stores, and there's some additional imagery to go with it too. I initially said when I saw this stuff, um, although it was very impressive to see how polished it was for somebody like a Tyler who's mostly been doing streetwear and what you'd maybe deem to be menswear nowadays um, with the stuff that he's been doing with um, golf, uh, on the flirt, right? And stuff that he's also been doing in terms of actual cut and sew pieces. But to go into an actual fashion house like Louis Vuitton and be able to present your ideas at that level and it still look very polished and it still look very much like you without it looking sloppy scrappy whatever it may be is incredible obviously they probably would have never let that happen because they're a multi-million dollar fucking business and shit there's a level of polish that they're always going to have but i still feel like there are the ideas that they core, the storytelling that he's able to kind of depict in this shit is fucking phenomenal um if anything apart from that I don't think the clothes are that different to the stuff that he does in his own stuff. I think, if anything, some of the accessories, some of the shoes, some of the bags are probably some of the most interesting pieces. Um, and maybe just the novelty of owning um, stuff designed by Tyler that's also done in conjunction with Pharrell at Louis Vuitton, considering their history, considering that house, considering the connection with Virgil, RIP and shit. That's enough of a reason to have this stuff in your archive, in your collection anyway. But if you're a fan of this type of aesthetic, you could probably get it for far cheaper in, you know, in some iteration within, you know, um, Tyler, the creator's many um, brands that he has now at the moment. But regardless of that, one thing he does do incredibly well is the imagery, is um, all of the activations, all of the presentations that go on with his work. That stuff is always going to be A1 and it all looks fucking sublime. But these bags, look at these fucking bags. Oh, fucking beautiful. If I'm not mistaken, the monogram print on these massive keep all bags in these various sizes have been all hand-drawn. So everything has been hand-drawn, obviously printed on these fucking pieces of leather, which is fucking cool. So you get this really kind of like nice DIY um, effect on these bags that are incredibly polished, incredibly expensive and luxurious. You get this really DIY um, aspect to it which kind of draws back to the era of, of kind of draws back to his kind of history starting off kind of drawing you know early um you know odd future golf line sheets and lookbooks and pieces and notebooks and stuff to go from being that kid that was drawing all that stuff on the back of a napkin paper or on the back of a notebook or in the back of a moleskin and now you're doing it at louis vuitton incredible i also love the fact that he featured um james jason jules um also known as garmsville big up him i've known him for a while from like the london scene and shit he's a top boy and um, he also co-produced or no co-put out this book called black ivy which i haven't really ever got a hold of but if you ever read the book take ivy you'd know that it's kind of loosely based on that but obviously for a black perspective in terms of you know black people's um you know contribution to fashion um overall um it's very very well regarded i missed out on the exhibition I think the exhibition was like missing threads or something like that that happened in Somerset House. So I was bummed I missed that out. But um, ever since that exhibition, ever since that book, um, him and Tyler have struck up a relationship, which is pretty cool because they have a similar sort of style and aesthetic. So it's cool to see him being embraced and being used in the lookbook. Um, this shirt he's wearing actually is actually beautiful. I'm not going to lie. The colors, the bag, like that's actually really nice. I think that's one of my favorite styled looks in this actual campaign, what Jason Jules is wearing. Where he's got this really amazing almost silk looking shirt um and then underneath here you've got this lime green jacket that's wrapped around his shoulders which is kind of something that he would do in a knot right um and then you've also got this lovely bag this this satchel is probably one of my favorite bags actually in the entire collection this kind of um almost half shell clam type of style bag with this nice leather um latch here looks fucking beautiful and he's also wearing some sandals there with the socks and there's also a golf bag there another bag here too with some um, tags on it as well that look like fucking flowers so big up him and a few other pieces as well but the prices are nothing to be smirched at if you actually go on the louis vuitton website they're all available now to kind of check out the prices are no fucking joke that's for sure which you should expect it's fucking louis vuitton but the prices are no joke um that big jacket that he's got in the actual header picture here underneath is actually how much is it they say it's 2450 um the was it the key pal bandoulaire 50 bag is 2400 i'm not gonna lie maybe it's me if i had 200 and 400 if i had 
£2,500 to spare, I'm not going to lie, I would probably buy a bag over a jacket. Even though I'm a premier jacket boy, if I had £2,500 to spare, I'd probably buy a bag over a jacket because this bag would last you forever. Legitimately, it would last you for fucking ever. It could turn into a new travel bag. You could floss and take that to fucking the gym and shit, right? It could be fucking crazy. But I'd actually buy the bag over the jacket. But regardless, you've got great varsity jackets here. You've got a nice backpack. There's a reversible craggy bucket hat. There's a dandy loafers for eight ninety five. What else do we have here featured? Some good shit, to be fair. It's a lot of it, but some good shit. This is a really nice jean set. I really love the monogram denim jean set. It's really fucking beautiful. I'm assuming this has been embossed or something along those kind of lines. And you've also got the, the obviously the hand-drawn um, Louis Vuitton things all over the outside of it that have been kind of stitched. That looks fucking incredible. The craftsmanship on that is fucking nuts. Um, you've got mini uh, key pal bandoliers there. You've got a nice belt. You've got a you got a pouch there. Your card holders, 235. That might be one of the popular ones because it's one of the cheapest things on there. A crew neck shirt is 740 pounds. Jesus Christ, they're not playing games, are they? 740 for a pink t-shirt. God damn. You forget what these upper brands are doing, innit? You've got fucking Taco there as well in the in the uh, in the lookbook, which is cool in the campaign. These guys have been friends for literally, you know, decades, it feels like. So it's cool to see them still friends to this day. Oh, you've got this really cool tracksuit. This tracksuit is fucking beautiful, actually. That tracksuit is nice. This knitted collar, embroidered technical blouson, and as well as the trousers. Oof. I love this. That is really cool. That tracksuit is amazing. I'd wear the fuck. I think it's a tracksuit. I don't know if it is, but I'd wear it together. I quite like that. I'm not really a fan of the LV trainer, so I'll skip that. I don't really care about the LV trainer. Um, you've got the standard, you know, quintessential tire de creator, fair aisle, um, wall vest as well there. You've got a nice pair of like, what are they called? Tailored China trousers. You've got a nice message. There's a messenger bag. That's really beautiful. I'd wear the fuck out of this. Actually. This is actually really cool. That messenger bag is beautiful. I love that. Um, you've also got a pouch there, envelope pouch. You've got a pocket organizer some really really good stuff here not gonna lie the cardigan is not too deep not too bad as is the soft mini trunk bag which probably could double up as a good dj bag i wouldn't deny that to be the case you got that green bag you got the key power in that green print as well that i fucking love that's fucking beautiful i'm not going to lie i wonder how much this bag is here this one that i like that jason jules is wearing in this look i wonder how that how much that particular bag is I'm assuming it's probably going to be about a thousand as well, but that particular shape, oh, there it is. It's called a man. What's it called? It's called a Mon Montessoris Montessoris messenger bag. This is fucking beautiful. It's one of my favorite ones there. One thousand one hundred ninety. Oh no, one thousand nine hundred ten pounds. This is definitely one of my favorite bags in the entire collection. I think it looks amazing. Perfect size for most dudes to put most shit inside of it. I love the inside features that whole dog illustration as well. Um, nice um, leather on the outside, the nice monogram print. Um, yeah, the raw leather feel on the straps as well. The big kind of, um, what you call it, tag there as well. You can probably put some extra tags also there. There's a towel set. There's, what's that? There's a Vivian Golf. There's a bag with tees. It's a really extensive, really extensive collection trucker hats you've also got even fragrance as well included you've also got some jewelry too you've got this paradise stone necklace included there all very tired of creator-esque as well i love everything about it i love everything about it of course if you've got the funds you can check it out available now at louisvuitton.com available now at louisvuitton.com love to fucking see it um personally would i like to see tyler at louis vuitton anytime soon not now i think give the guy time I don't think there should be any rush to give him any sort of like high fashion job. Even though I say at the time when he was presenting one of his latest collections, I think he did a collaboration with Lacoste recently. And I said the stuff he's doing with Lacoste was <clears throat> just as good as any stuff I've seen during Paris Fashion Week for men's. But I still think he has plenty of time to do that later on in his career. Having been a big fan of Tyler, watching a lot of his interviews and shit, I get the feeling he's probably not at that stage just yet. He probably has a lot more to kind of give in terms of music and then he might want to transition. And even if he went through the same thing at the same time, I don't think he could. 
I don't think he could legitimately do everything he does now and also run a fashion house um, and also be somewhat sane. I think that'll take a lot out of him. Um, he's also somebody that doesn't like to live in Europe. He complains about Europe. He complains about London often, you know, having to live here um, full time or most of the time. I'm not sure if he could even handle that really going forward. So there's a lot to think about in terms of that sort of stuff. But one thing is for certain, when it comes to actually producing the actual work, and putting out the collections and kind of competing on that level he can obviously do it because the imagery the, the the offerings available the taste level the finish of it is all really fucking good like let's not lie it's all really fucking good to the point where there are people out there legitimately saying that he should be given a job after pharrell gets the boot or when he leaves or something along those kind of lines um again i think probably it's a bit too much for him right now um, because I think, if anything, if you give him the job, the unfortunate thing of it is that most likely he'll just do variations of this collection season in, season out, and then people will be complaining that he does the same thing all the time, which he always does, but he just refines stuff. So you have to be careful what you wish for. But I am a big fan of him. Um, I do love what he does. I do love what he presents. And I'm hoping that now he's proved that he can compete with the big dogs at this level. And if the opportunity does come about where there's an opportunity to work for one of those big brands or those big houses, he'll be maybe considered for that role. I'm a big fan of his, always have been a big fan of his, and I'm happy to see his ascent continue. I'm happy to see his fucking ascent continue.